Are they what? Did I mess them up? Let's go through this. Let's go through this. Um, this is the project that um, we're sort of setting up a bit with you. I want to give it to you now, um, even though it's something we're still sort of working through. Um, you actually already, you're supposed to have already read uh, the textbook covering this chapter. They actually don't do so much about this on the textbook, so I have uh, some additional sources for you um, that I'm putting in a folder titled Great Migration Project Folder um, that will be in the uh, week 11 uh, materials here. So I want to make it so this project is something that you can do without having to go to a library or outside. Um, so we'll, I'll go through this handout really quickly to so, try to explain to you my thoughts. Um, great migration, beneficial or detrimental, right? comparing, contrasting a black southern life to, to or with southern life, uh, northern life to southern life, basically. So the overview starts off this way. After Plessy and the institution, institutionalization of Jim Crow laws in the South, many African Americans migrated to the North in hope of a better life. What I wanted to present today was this idea that this really fits a larger um, theme right, of people moving, especially this idea of mobility, this idea of progressivism, right, seeking progress, defining what progress is going to mean for yourself. You have people coming from outside the country to inside the country, but in, this, in terms of this particular stream, these are folks moving from within the country, generally speaking. Um, and, but they're coming for many of the same reasons, as we'll see here in a second. After considering both primary and secondary sources, students will compare the lives of African Americans still residing in the South during this period with those who participated in the Great Migration. Uh, generally speaking, the Great Migration has always been seen as this overwhelmingly positive thing. Right? People leaving the, the Jim Crow South, living, leaving violence and a depressed economy for the North. Right? Uh, sort of opportunity, freedom, um, equality, all these sorts of ideas um, that get associated with the North. Um, as we know, some of those things are true. Some of those things will be realized. Many of them will not. Um, so even though it's been overwhelmingly seen as beneficial, some people have started to reevaluate this idea of the Great Migration um, and think about whether it was more beneficial or whether it was actually um, a bad decision on some levels because of what they would encounter in the North. Um, things are not essentially going to be all good in the North. So I want you to start thinking about that general question. Is it ultimately beneficial or is it detrimental or is it good or bad, basically um, speaking? That's the general question, the starting point. Where you arrive after that starting point is really going to be largely up to you. So I want to explain some more of that. Um, students should consider various sources, uh, how various sources may be used to support the positive as well as the negative experiences of African Americans during this migration. So the guiding question is this. We'll write a position paper consider considering whether or not the Great Migration was beneficial or detrimental overall to those who participated in it and including information on the long-term implications of what becomes of it. Maybe that's part of how you'll answer that question as to whether it's good or bad. And attempting to determine whether or not the benefits of the migration outweighed the hardships of it, consider the following themes as they relate to African American life during the period. So I want you to think in terms of themes here as you're, as you're thinking about how to construct this paper. There are going to be a number of reasons why um, people articulate that they're leaving the South and going to the North or going to the West later. Some for health reasons, right? there's going to be increased access to health care, for example, in the North. Safety or welfare, right? we talked about the role of lynching and racial violence in the South and how folks are going to be leaving for those reasons. You'll see in some of the letters that we're going to go through um, from people that actually migrate that they specifically say that. Some of them say, look, I'm leaving because of lynching. I'm leaving because my family's not safe. Educational opportunities. A number of migrants say, I'm leaving so that my kids have better access to education. Right? Sometimes they say it that specifically. They articulate why they're going. Right? And this is often the case for many different uh, immigrant groups um, in American history. Education mentioned that. Housing, um, going for better housing. Employment is, is one of the overwhelming reasons. Uh, most people are going to articulate that they're coming, particularly for these war jobs in World War I or factory jobs or other sorts of higher, higher paying jobs to get out of sharecropping, to get off the cotton fields. Right? That economic motivation is probably the most common um, reason people gave for leaving. Um, yet we're going to see what do they find when they get to the north. Is it ultimately a good idea? Or are they glad they came or are they not glad? 
family life, religion. A number of these folks talk about, you know, I don't feel like a man living here. I need to go north in order to um, be a man and take care of my family. A number of women leave for um, the same economic reasons or perhaps other reasons. Some women say I'm leaving because um, I'm vulnerable to sexual abuse here in the South. Uh, a number of women are going to make that case. So be thinking of these themes, um, ideas of manhood and womanhood that may come up in that gender, not just racial issues, class may come up. There may be a number of factors that uh, these individuals articulate. Ultimately, what you're going to do is choose a main character. You're going to choose a character whose eyes you will then look at in order to a help answer this question of whether ultimately it was a good or a bad thing that they decide to migrate. So you're going to use one specific example to really make a kind of larger case, you know, thinking about the themes that we just read about or, and even other themes. Right? Why is it they say they're going? What do they find when they arrive? And is it ultimately in their interest that they left? Um, many historians, for example, right now are talking about there's a major reverse migration happening, especially since the 1980s. A lot of folks are going from the north back to the south. Some folks are going back to farms. Right, that, that that might be a better life for them in 2015. Right? So it's interesting when we think about that fact or contemporary fact uh, that may make us reevaluate this, this great migration of the 20th century overall. One of the skills you will need to complete this project will be the ability to make connections between specific and general information. So you have one main character in mind, right? but it's really about this larger story of the great migration. You'll utilize both primary sources and secondary sources. Now, secondary sources, and those of you that some of you already know this stuff, but secondary sources are things like textbooks, right? They're written by historians after the historical event happens. Primary sources are from the time period. So a letter written by somebody that's migrating, or a photograph in a newspaper of migrants, or um, diaries of people that are migrating that tell their story from their own perspective. These are primary sources. Okay. Um, we're going to have a number of, there's a number of videos available to you that, um, may help you find these main characters, may help you identify some of the reasons why they're migrating um, and whatnot. But ultimately what you want to do is put primary and secondary sources together. Right? So sometimes we, we've seen videos, right? We pair that with what we read in the textbook. You pair that with what I talk about in these lectures. Right? It's, it's best to have multiple and different types of sources to try to paint the best picture possible of history. This is what you'll be doing with this project is pairing different types of sources. So some primary sources, maps, right? There are various maps of the migration patterns from places like uh, Mississippi to Chicago, for example, is going to be a major um, path of the Great Migration. Uh, New Orleans, right? New Orleans jazz ends up going to Chicago, essentially via migrants. So you can look at maps and, and sort of get some ideas about this. Letters, newspaper ads, photos, uh, secondary sources, books, journal articles, films. Right? You'll consider the broad contours of the Great Migration, right? What are some of the push and pull factors involved? Uh, sociologists and historians that study immigration always look at push and pull factors. Uh, what are push and pull factors? Well, there are basically factors that push you away from your home and that pull you towards your new home, right? Otherwise, why would you come, right? It's always difficult to pick up, pack up, and leave and go to a new place. You wouldn't do it if everything was perfect in your home, right? So usually there are factors pushing you out and there may also be certain factors pulling you towards your new home. So, for example, in terms of these migrants, things like lynching and racial violence are pushing them out of the South. The economic downturn, no jobs, pushing them out of the South. Yet there are also things pulling them to certain cities in the North. Industry, war work, right? all these jobs available in places like New York, Detroit, Chicago, they're being pulled towards certain areas, having family members. Right, so think in terms of these push and pull factors as to why people are going to migrate. Again, this is really very, very similar to other immigration streams throughout American history. Um, starting today, so I want you to start thinking about this today, start thinking about how this might look and be constructed, and, um, and even though we're still talking about some of these ideas, I wanted to present this overview to you so you know what's coming and exactly the stages and steps that will we'll be sort of doing to pursue this. Begin considering the specific aspects of the migration that your research will explore or focus on. For instance, you will choose one main character, preferably from a primary source. It may come from one of the videos. It may come from the textbook. But a lot of them may come from some of the primary sources that are going to be available on the site. 
Um, there are some short letters, for example, from people that migrate, and they say why they're coming and what they expect to find. Um, using one of those main characters will be helpful for kind of framing your argument about the migration. Um, so you're using them as your central example, but your paper isn't all about that one person, right? They're kind of your, they're your introduction to the subject, but it's really your argument about uh, the Great Migration, whether it's good or bad, and, and sort of how we know that, right? what themes come up in this migration story. <clears throat> how does race, class, gender, example, uh, for example, et cetera, influence the decisions and or experiences of your central character? How might notions of manhood or womanhood help us understand these motivations and fears? Uh, in addition, you will focus on a particular immigration stream to examine. This is a big topic of the Great Migration. Like I said, six million people ultimately come. Um, I want you to try to focus as much as possible your argument. One of the ways you can focus your argument is by choosing one main character, which you're going to sort of speak through. Another way you can focus your argument is by uh, focusing on one particular migration stream. Are you looking at people going from Alabama to Pittsburgh, or from you know, Georgia to D.C., or from you know uh, Mississippi to Chicago, right? So you can talk specifically about kind of the contours of that one stream rather than having to talk about everybody leaving everywhere in the South and going everywhere in the North. That's too big a project. You don't have the time or space or energy to do all that. So you can focus on a particular immigration stream. For example, Chicago, New York, D.C., Baltimore, other cities ultimately serve as key destination cities. People are going to arrive and really change these cities in this period. Uh, so you might choose any one of those and, and see where people are coming from and why. Lastly, after reading your paper, your reader should be able to draw some specific conclusions about the implications of the Great Migration. All right, so what's the bigger story here? Think about the significance. Think about a Great Migration as an identification term. Right? Who, what, when, where, but most importantly, why and how is it significant? This migration would lay the foundation for a number of significant events in 20th century American history, including things like the Harlem Renaissance. Right? Many say, look, no Harlem Renaissance is possible if you don't have hundreds of thousands of people going to Harlem, coming to places like D.C., which also experiences a renaissance in the same moment. Pittsburgh, Detroit, Chicago. Right? If you didn't get this sort of massive numbers of people coming there and transforming these urban spaces, you wouldn't have had a movement like that. So these are some of the implications of this great migration. The 20s and 30s in political expressions. Um, modern civil rights movement, some say, is greatly impacted by the fact that people are moving to concentrated areas, especially cities. So ultimately, in your conclusion, you can draw some conclusions about why it's so significant, how it's going to impact labor events. That's not the major part of your paper, but I want you to be thinking about the implications of your argument. It's been argued. Uh, at the same time, the question framing the overall project is whether or not the Great Migration was beneficial or detrimental to those who participated in it. Based on your research, decide where you stand on this question. Right? Your answer to that question is essentially the beginning of your thesis statement. Great Migration was detrimental because you know, this character you know, did this, blah, 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 encountered these themes and you know, had a hard time. Right, so your answer to that, to that question is the beginning of your thesis statement. Your main character may help you frame your thesis statement and decide what you think about how you answer that question. And you'll use evidence uh, to back up you know, your views. On the back is a, a sort of generic general outline of how the paper will proceed. Right, introduction, think who, what, when, where. Right, like you did with your identification, that's essentially like you do with introducing a paper, providing context, telling me when, perhaps you're talking about whatever particular city you're interested in, you're introducing your main character. Right, your thesis statement is the why and the how. How do you answer that question? Why is this important? And how are you specifically are you going to demonstrate it in this paper? Right, this paper is going to talk about this, this, and this to prove that the Great Migration was blank. The body of the essay is really the majority of your paper. Right? You're yeah, analyzing. Huh? Does it all have to happen next week? No, it has to happen in the next 12 days. <laughs> oh, so we can just turn in the final product on the 24th? Yeah, the final product's not due till the 24th. Okay. So, hold on. So, so we don't have to turn it in. We don't have to drop anything off of the thesis. The only thing you have to drop off is your thesis statement. Mm-hmm. 
one or two sentence thesis statement on what you're arguing and why. Okay. I think so to give you some feedback on that. Um, the body section is uh, the body section of the essay is the majority of the paper, um, but you're really doing a couple of couple of things in there that um, essentially the reason I'm pushing you to be so focused is because those five pages are going to fill up quickly. Uh, the body of the essay you're going to be analyzing, say the two or three key themes you think emerge in this migration story. You'll also be telling me about your sources. Right? You will also be telling me about your sources in the paper. So some of you would say in English class you might do a literature review. Right? This is, historians do the same thing, but they call it something else. Historians tend to call it historiography. Right? This is how we write about history. And, and what tell me about your sources. You will be telling me something about the sources that you're drawing from in the paper itself. So a page of that five pages may be you telling me about your sources, right? And another page or you know, half may be you actually analyzing the key themes, you introducing your main character, and then your conclusion talking about some of the implications of this. And like I said, five pages fills up quickly. I, this is why I'm pushing you to be so focused and so specific in your argument. To pick one main character, to pick a couple of key themes that you're going to talk about. You're not going to be able to talk about everything. Uh, you have to talk about what you feel is the most important aspects of the argument. So the outline is there. Um, <coughs> we can talk more about that, but I wanted to sort of say something about that. In terms of the tentative deadlines, we've kind of broken this up. We've already really started this project. We really already started this project with our last few conversations about the rise of industry, about urbanization, about progressivism, about even Booker T. Washington, the boys debate that's going to kind of fuel this. We'll talk about some other individuals that fit this and some examples of the migration. Um, I have a couple of um, sources in the, in the videos that will be helpful as well in helping you select a main character. Um, but I needed to give this to you now because um, too often we do not treat writing as a process. Right? I give you this and I say, okay, next class, write me a five-page paper. And then I'm surprised when you don't have time to think about it. Right? This is why I'm giving this to you now. <clears throat> really, in terms of the textbook, um, the Great Migration is mostly talked about in Chapter 19, or a few pages in Chapter 19, in fact. Um, so it's technically stuff we've already read or encountered, um, but I want you to think more deeply about this Great Migration and its ultimately its overall significance. Um, and I'm going to provide you with some outside, uh, outside the textbook sources that will help in this respect. Um, in the folder titled Great Migration Project Folder, there's um, some outlines or overviews of the migration with statistics that may be helpful. Uh, there are a couple of videos that talk about, and some of this we'll talk about next class, um, that talk about the migration overall and why people are coming. Um, there are some primary sources there, like some brief letters from migrants. There are some advertisements from African American newspapers advertising for people to come to places like Chicago and Detroit. So this gives you obviously some ideas about why people are coming, what they expect to find. There are letters from people saying, look, I came here and you know, it's worse here than it was in the South. So that may influence how you answer that question of whether or not it was good or bad. Right? Basically, you're not going to have to go and do outside work. Um, everything from, you know, from the textbook to the Blackboard side, I think, will all you'll need. There will be more than you need available to you, basically, um, to complete this project. Um, Questions, general questions about this as we get started with it. Should be some questions. My Cheetos. Are you clear what it is you'll be doing? Okay. So you have a question later there. Extension? No, you can't get another extension. I'll give you an extension until the 24th. That's not an extension. That was the original date. You see, if I'd have put the 20th instead of the 24th, then you would have felt like it was an extension. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't feel like you're cringing. Say what? <laughs> is it? <laughs> is it what? Is this our exam as well? Is that yeah, your exam? this is our last exam, right? So you, you always want to do anything after Thanksgiving. No. <laughs> <laughs> look at what you're doing. After Thanksgiving, come and just, just, just hang watch out. Videos. Come and play cards. And watch videos and stuff. <laughs> Like, that would be awesome. <coughs> <laughs> you said that's right. You said that's after that. It's okay. You're fine. It won't be a problem for you. This is the biggest, uh, biggest sort of thing that we're doing. That's why.
but I do want you to get started. If you're not caught up with the reading, the first step is to catch up, because chapter 19 uh, is where they start to talk about these ideas, right? Chapter 19 and 20, uh, like I put in the announcement, uh, deal with progressivism in World War I, which we essentially talked about you know, uh, today. But in terms of this specific topic, I put some of the page numbers on there where they first raised this issue of the Great Migration so that you can review those pages. <clears throat> in addition, I want you to start looking at the, the Blackboard materials and, and sort of seeing what's there, seeing how they may help you. Yes? Um, are you Yeah, I'll put them up in a moment here. I have them on a bowl. I need to transfer them over. But they'll, yeah, they'll be there. Yes. Do you have a, what's called microscope for the years? Yeah, it says six to eight there. I'm, 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 that's a kind of general number. Um, see what, you know, see what you need and see what you rely on. For example, uh, the textbook is one source. Um, some of the videos could be a source and maybe three right there. Um, there's some letters and stuff in the folder that you may easily end up with more than that. But I'm not pushing you to use 28 sources, you know, if we have too many sources to actually write about them. You're going to find that you have very little time and space to actually do what you want to do. You probably really are only going to be able to talk about two or three major themes in, in your main character in, 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 you know, in five pages. I don't want you, people always say it's five pages, and then they end up writing me 12 pages. I don't want that. No more than five pages. And that's why I push you to be so focused at the outset, to focus it through your main character, to focus it through the two or three key themes that you see impacting this particular migration stream. Don't make it bigger than it is. Like I see y'all starting to let your ears explode. Don't do that. It's not that not that crazy. Yes? I'll leave the format up to you, whatever you're comfortable oh, with. As long as it's yeah, as long as it's consistent and as long as you cite you know, EPA, Chicago, what have you, whatever you want to do. Geography, yeah, historiography generally is it's crazy. I only use that term because I was in grad school and we were asking what historiography was, and our teachers like, you know what? By the time you really learn what it is, you'll be a part of it. I'm like, what are you talking about? Basically, it just means how history is written, right? And how some of these things change over time. For example, with this Great Migration Project, like I was saying, people are, are there's a reverse migration in progress. People are going from New York to Atlanta, right, to, to Mississippi and, and starting farms. So now historians have started to rethink this. I'm like, wait a second. We always thought that the goal was to get to the north. Why then are you know, several hundred thousand people going back south? Does that mean there was something wrong with this? During the Great Depression, for example, obviously people are thinking more about economics, right? Stock market crashes. Some folks are saying, wait a second. Right? That, this is a moment when economics was the motivation for people to come north. Did they come for the wrong reasons? So it's interesting how history changes in terms of how it's written, based not just on the history, but based on what's happening in the country at the time. I can give you another example. Say uh, after September 11th, if you read a history of um, Islam, it's going to read a certain way. If you read a history of Islam by American historians, they're thinking of certain things. Whether they want to be or not, they're influenced by contemporary society. They're influenced by contemporary politics. African American history now is written quite differently because there's an African American president, 2007. Not that this changed, right? The history itself has not changed. Our sources about it have changed. Our contemporary situations change. And so you'll see that depending on what the types of sources that you see, even when they were written, sometimes impacts uh, how they're written. Right? So that's why I want you to use multiple sources and see what kind of picture gets painted about this topic. The topic itself hasn't really changed. Sometimes it's the historical context that changes. Questions? These are good questions. When you have to like turn off all copies, or does it have to be submitted via Blackboard? Uh, they, can be, they can be submitted via Blackboard. Um, I do want to submit the thesis as well. That way I can, I can uh, take a look at them, give you feedback on them a little bit ahead of time. But um, you don't have to wait you know, until then. Those deadlines are Know, sort of end dates, you can turn in stuff earlier, you know, keep getting started, keep start writing early, these sorts of things. Um, remember, writing is a process. Right? So if, you, if you write it, step away from it for a while, add some other things, we come back, we have class, it may change your views on certain things, it may, you know, introduce you to a main character you hadn't thought of. Um, there are a number of, of possibilities here, and I want you to think of this as a process. But if I didn't give this to you ahead of time, it's impossible to think of this as a process. 
We could have waited and done two more lectures, and I could have gave this to you and said, okay, in two days, give me a five-page paper. That is one way to do this. But it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't. I don't think it benefit. I don't think it benefits you, and it doesn't benefit me because all then you're all you do is rushing and trying to write five pages and get it you know, as soon as possible. Three days. Just supposed to avoid that. Yeah, See, teachers do that, and then we complain that you know it's not well written. Uh, there is no such thing as good writing. There's only good rewriting. <laughs> you have to think first and put it down. I don't like that. Let me fix it. Do this and that. I rethink it now. <laughs> I've done that too. I mean, I wrote a 20 page, lost it on the computer, and had to rewrite it. <laughs> but it's, it wasn't my best work. It would have been better if I could have wrote it, let it sit for a second, and then actually gone back and made it make sense. So that's that's the goal here. I want you to be thinking as we're even as we continue to have conversations about um, these things. Check Blackboard often as well. I'm going to try to direct you towards some of the sources within that Great Migration folder, particularly some of the videos. Um, there is a video on there by a lady named Isabel Wilkerson. Isabel Wilkerson used to be a writer for the Washington Post. She recently wrote a Pulitzer Prize winning book on the Great Migration. Um, interestingly enough, she interviewed thousands of people for this book. But she wrote this entire big thick book using three main characters. She chose three main characters and kind of looked at the Great Migration through their eyes. So it was a 20 minute interview with her on NPR talking about the Great Migration, some of the reasons why her folks are immigrating and migrating, these sorts of things that I think will be helpful for you. We'll probably um, do it in class, but I, I have it on the, um, in that folder to help you out. There's another guy that wrote a book on this. So again, this is basically what historians do, right? They're using specific examples to write about these larger questions and themes. Um, so essentially you're doing what they do, it's just on a smaller scale. I'm not expecting book and just expect you to sort of to deal with the specific aspect of the argument and, and essentially answer that question. That makes sense, gentlemen? I know it's just new stuff. There should be a little anxiety, but not too much. Right? Too much anxiety means you can't get start, started writing. That's what we want to avoid. All right. Good, good, good. First step, if you are behind on the reading, catch up because this will help you in terms of this project and you know, our, our continuing discussions. All right, let you out early. All right, take care. <laughs>